All right, thank you everybody for coming out. My name's Rob. I'm Katrina. I'm Haley. I'm Casey. And we're here today to discuss solutions for Penn State's general education requirements. Um, you know, at Penn State, we're all required to take you know, around 45 credits of general ed classes um, on top of our major classes. And you know, if you're not familiar with what that means, you know, um, it's your math, your history, your cultures, your arts, your humanities. Um, and then your major classes would be, you know, strictly relating to your major, whether it's economics, business, engineering, um, et cetera. So does anybody want to explain, you know, the three points or the three issues that, you know, like have been brought up by each party regarding the general education requirement at Penn State? Yeah, I'll start with students. Um, students argue that gen eds are just a waste of time because they could be putting a lot more of their effort into their major classes um, when like they're already so stressed out with school and stuff just having these extra classes are just like yeah there's extra a, work for them and they don't have a lot of interest in subjects that aren't pertaining specifically to each major resulting in like cheating and other things that like aren't good for school <laughs> um, also it's like expensive like all these extra the classes that the kids like don't really care about like they're spending extra money and extra time on all of these classes yeah tuition could be cut down so much if they didn't have to take all these extra classes and like the amount of time here they wouldn't actually have to spend um like the, all the whole four yeah years. four or possibly like five depending mm -hmm. on your major because some have extra yes yeah, if you didn't have to take these classes you wouldn't have to spend all that extra time. That could cut off like so many semesters. Like mm -hmm. if people don't really realize how like long you how long you spend lot. on like gen eds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially like people who come into school having finished a lot of like those gen ed requirements through high school, mm -hmm. they cut down on like their time at school. Like my friend, she only has to go for like three and a half years mm -hmm. because she came in with so many credits already. Mm -hmm. Which would be But do you think that um you know, students are maybe ne neglecting the fact that, you know, there's, like, so many students, I know I was one of them, that, like, kind of came to Penn State, thought they wanted to do something, and then, you know, through taking other classes, getting involved in other things, you know, you kind of make that switch. That's you, true. You find something else, you know what I mean? Um, you know, do, do you maybe, maybe think that's that's one reason why they do this? Or yeah, gen eds could spark, like, so many new ideas that, like, if, if students come in, like, wanting to go a certain path, and they're taking... If they just had to take those classes, they would never be exposed to like other subjects. And like taking a gen ed, a gen ed outside their major could want them to like start a whole new career and like have a whole new life path. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I mean, especially in high school, you know, um, I'm not sure about all three of you, but like, you know, aside from maybe one business class, and you know, you're you're. Like in middle school, you're sewing, you're cooking and everything, yeah. you know, there's not that big of a selection of like electives to take and everything or general eds, you know, you generally only have like one or two a year. So it's like, you know, like you, you come to college and you're exposed to so much more and, you know, that might be, you know, one of the reasons why they, they have these gen eds, you know, in place. Yeah, and you also become a much more well-rounded student and like person in general if you have more knowledge of other subjects other than like one thing that you end up majoring in. Yeah, go, going off that, you know, um, I guess do, do we want to start discussing the faculty members, you know, kind of their view on things? Because I think, yeah. you know, being a well-rounded student and, you know, as we just discussed, sparking new interests, you know, that, that's a big reason why I would think, or like, you know, their argument for why there should be this general education requirement, which, if I'm not mistaken, is 45 credits in addition to a U.S. culture, an international culture, and a writing intensive class that's um, considered a writing across the curriculum. Yeah, it's 15 credits of skills, um, 30 credits of knowledge domains, and yeah, that like add up. Oh, uh, what do we call it? Three credits of United States cultures, three of international cultures, and three of writing and curriculum. Okay, so let's. Yeah. Let's just think 50 plus credits. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of interesting because we talked about, you know, like college hours mm -hmm. and the expense that's, you know, really 15 credits a semester, that's almost two full years of, of college. Yeah. Also, stress is a big thing, I think. Like, 
it just adds on so much more unnecessary, like unnecessary work that they may have to put in for something that they're not interested in. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a waste, and they could, yeah. I mean, do you, do you feel that? Um... I wouldn't say it was like a full waste though, because, um, like I think it's like a good thing to not be a like a one trick pony per se. To like be able to have like to be able to talk about like things that are a lot broader mm -hmm. than just like business related stuff if that's your major or just like I don't know, like psych or like just what your major is. I think it's like important to be like a well rounded person yeah. in general, which these credits are actually helping to mm -hmm. make which, you become. Which I think is a good point, but it, it makes me think about the idea of does being a well rounded person help you say get a job you know what I mean if you if you like pull back everything you go to college <laughs> to get a job yeah you know, like how much does reading history you know what I mean taking a history class or an art class help you get a job in engineering or something like that especially if you have to go on to like more schooling mm -hmm. and then you have so much more expenses after that too I feel like just the years yeah. maybe aren't worth mm -hmm. Like, and Brock was saying about, like, taking history classes, like, if that's not related to your major, yeah, whatever, but, like, mm -hmm. for instance, like, a cast class like this, like, this could be related to the future. It's a gen ed, right. like, we're forced to be able to learn how to work in groups and, like, make presentations, like, that's a valuable gen ed. But taking a history gen ed when you're a business major, that's mm -hmm. not really valuable. It, yeah, exactly. Right. You know, like, like uh, something like CAS, where it's yeah. like, more or less public speaking, you're going to be doing that for the rest of your life, right. regardless of whether you're working Yeah, regardless or, of your major. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, I would think, a general requirement for anything. <laughs> yeah. For most things you do. Um, well, as like an online art class. It's mm -hmm. probably yeah, not something right. that's going to like, really that. help you. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should, um, you know, from these kind of just review them real quick and then kind of, you know, circle or we'll, we'll pick, you know, three or four that we think, you know, like are most related to, to the student's argument, you know, that way help us when we, when we move down the yeah. line, like move forward to solutions, we can really try to, you know. So do you want to do it in the perspective them. of students and um, then also in the perspective of faculty? Right. Right. Yeah, faculty. yeah. Students, students and faculty. Yeah, okay. I think you know, we should split them up and kind of, you know, once we, once we kind of uh, go over like faculty, I think we should kind of try to. You know, yeah. Narrow up the down. issue narrows the issues because yeah. honestly, yeah, I, I think some of these, um, you know, being well rounded, um, things such as like you know, no interest, extra work, it, it's kind of you know, through that email and everything, it's yeah. some of it relates to both, but you know, which does it fit with more? Yeah. Like taking an argument, you know, I'm, I'm assuming or I'm thinking that students, you know, I, I would think students want to take the point that they don't think they need the general ed, and faculty members think they yeah. do. So, yeah. I mean, with that said, what do you think are some of the issues or reasons behind it for faculty members? Faculty are, like, annoyed that some students don't really take it seriously because it's just a gen ed. Yeah. Because they're spending all their time, mm -hmm. like, setting up a curriculum, setting up homework, grading, and all that stuff. There are some students who want to be in the class and are truly interested, and then there are others who are making a joke out of it. Yeah, who are just taking it, just to take it, for, like, the, whatever, three credits that they have to have. Mm -hmm. And that relates back to students not sparking, not having their interest sparked. Like, if they don't care about the subject, then the faculty can tell. Yeah, and then they're going to be, like, I don't know, it just doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I, I kind of think too that um, like a lot of the classes that are taken by students is like like you all suggested it's like oh I need to take one so you know what can I find one that's maybe online or what can yeah. I find one mm -hmm. that uh, you just go on you try is, to find it's just the stuff. easiest yeah. one where where do students um you know where can I get the answers from say like yeah. all like the other cast classes or yeah. com classes yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know I think uh, too from like a, a faculty standpoint that must be like pretty frus frustrating. Mm -hmm. Because you know there is that disengagement yeah. from students, and there's only like, a small amount who are really wanting to be there, like mm -hmm. having that as their like specific mm -hmm. major. And you know what? What does that do for the faculty? You know, one, one that comes to my mind is you know the faculties represent the school. If kids aren't students aren't interested in the classes. You know, maybe a poor academic performance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which looks bad to the faculty, which makes the school look bad. Mm -hmm. Also, I think we should talk about kids who come into school not having declared a major or really not having a clue what they want, okay. and they take they use these gen eds 
as a way to really figure out what they do want. So I think it's like mm -hmm. good for students that come into DUS, but maybe not for students who come in already in a school. Mm -hmm. right? right. I think uh, you know moving moving forward with solutions that you know we could try to like integrate yeah. that because you know what. You know, so we just talked about how sparking, you know, sparking new interests and yeah. being well-rounded. It kind of works both ways. Yeah. You know, like some there might be some students that think it's a good idea, and others that mm -hmm. are kind of like, oh well, you know, I don't feel I need this because it doesn't yeah. prepare mm -hmm. me. So, because um, some students come in with like a full, like they know what they want, mm -hmm. they're ready to go for it, and they just want to be like fully immersed already. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that's kind of interesting because I don't know about like I I've, I've been told before like. How many people really know what they want to be? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like you don't know what you want to do or be until you try it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe that might be, you know, another viewpoint from faculty members yeah. that, you know, it's once again just expanding your yeah. horizon and everything. Yeah, because like how could you really know at 18 mm -hmm. what you actually mm -hmm. want? Yeah, like like we discussed, like you know, in high school you're not really exposed to that much. Yeah. So it's like you might think you know what you want to do until you get, you get to a big school, yeah. especially a big school like at Penn State. You know, there's so much more to offer yeah. to students than, say, like a smaller school. So I think, too, um, I, I would think that faculty members look at it as like, all right, well, as students, you know, argue that it's expensive, maybe faculty members think that, oh, well, you know, we want them to get the most out of their tuition by offering yeah, yeah, the right. most different options and everything, you know? Yeah, that's good. I like that. And especially at a big school like Penn State, like, how there's hundreds of majors so like I think also students can be a little less like they can be like they can, they can be overwhelmed coming into such a big school that offers so many options they don't even know what's available so having gen eds could maybe like narrow their options and just make them feel like it's a little bit of a smaller school like, mm -hmm. even like it makes them feel like they're not as like clueless as to like their options mm -hmm. um I think too like with that like you know, you hear on the news and everything that, like, you know, the world's trying to become a more diverse place, mm -hmm. whether it's, like, culturally or, you know, even in, like, an academic setting. I think, uh, you know, one thing that having gen eds does is kind of, you know, creates diversity among students, different yeah. backgrounds, different, you know, interests and things. So, um, I think I think from there, I mean, I, I don't know, does anybody else have any, any other ideas? I think we've basically yeah, covered we most um, of Maybe that. we can just add that the uh, university faculty senate they, that's like who makes the rules pretty okay. much I think for Penn State and they argue that gen eds are necessary to develop intellectual curiosity and to strengthen strengthen their ability to think okay. so they're the overall rule makers and to keep in mind what they're thinking mm -hmm. okay so and then from the students should we go back or yeah I mean I, I think just from like looking at this I think like you know we could summarize mm -hmm. maybe three or four main issues that they're all you know relating to yeah i think some of them like are like, yeah they're like, you know, like they're, yeah, yeah connected um so definitely i think um no interest is a big one no interest okay yeah, i think that's think, like because yeah that sparks like cheating mm -hmm. and like expenses okay so if you're all okay with it i'm gonna erase it and kind of just write like the four main yeah issues mm -hmm. or just like we're just right 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 yeah just get to that, really. Okay, so one is no interest and in, you know, what that leads to. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, two. Um, I think a lot, like, extra work would be another one because that goes with like a waste of time and cutting the college years okay so you, you think that should that be goes under yeah I think no that, interest though um well or maybe no i guess time. it could be its own like time yeah yeah cutting time is not okay. really connected to that um, yeah so cutting time um just put under it you know expense waste Waste of time, extra work. Extra expenses. Um, we, yeah. Or is that do you think it should be its own thing? Um, no, I think you know. It all. I think that goes together. Yeah. Because yeah. time equals money. Yeah. I think um. Some, <laughs> something that just sparked my mind about the extra work thing too is, you know, like I've taken some classes where it was like, all right, I just need to take a gen ed class, so I take it, thinking it's going to be easy, and it ends up being like one of my more harder classes yeah. for the semester, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like, yeah. well. 
why am I putting in more work for a gen ed class yeah. than I am my own major classes? Right. You know, going to in the long run, I would think be more useful. Yeah. Um, all right, good. And especially like recently, a lot of classes that were easy gen eds have been reworking their curriculum to make them harder, and so that people no longer have the answers and no longer can just skate by. Like people actually have to work really hard in some of these like previously simple courses. Okay. I think yeah, I think those are the big ones. Um, I think you know, kind of looking at from the other side. I think uh, you know, ex kind of like making students more rounded. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like oh, one, yeah, of the, yeah. one of the issues or one of the reasonings behind yeah. it. You know, rounded and like new, it, like sparking new interest. I think mm -hmm. it's like something that should go under. Um, hmm. Is there anything else we're missing? I don't, um, I don't really think so. I think we've I think that's kind of touched upon like you know all, yeah, all the main points. Yeah. Um, if you think one thing, I can just go back real quick. You know, Penn State, you need a minimum of 120 credits to graduate. So you know, we talked about time. You're taking 50 plus credits of Gen Eds. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. do you, it really comes in half. Do you, do you really need that many? You know? Oh, that's a fair thought to maybe be keep gen eds like the faculty what, what seems to be good, but just cut it in half maybe so that's not as much of like so it's like less time taken. Mm -hmm. So should we move into which and what's that? Yeah. The first one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna move everything. Over. Just slide it over. Yeah. So the first solution is just cut the gen eds like in half. So they're still getting just the best of both worlds. They're still getting yeah experience. And they're still getting the well roundedness. But they just don't have to take up as much time and money. Yeah. I like that. And like with per major, you could probably figure out which, like how much, how, like how many credits it should be specifically. By major specifics. Yeah. Okay. Well, when we get into pros and cons, we'll discuss that a little more. Yeah. Um, What's another one? Or we should do the two extremes, like getting rid of them completely mm -hmm. and keeping them like mm -hmm. how it is. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, get rid completely. So with that said, we're saying you should add to like your major specific courses. courses. Right. Yeah, because you can't just have you can't 50 just, yeah. less credits to graduate. That seems mm -hmm. aggressive. Or maybe have the, like certain uh, I don't know if that makes sense. Like gen eds per like major that are like more specific to yeah. Do it by yeah, does that each, make sense? Like if each like different college had a set of their own their gen own types. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you don't have to take a random science or art class mm -hmm. if you're like like I don't know like a PR or major. Gen or something. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We go. We can even you know as we move forward, we can look to you know integrate that into like yeah. you know. Another solution. Yeah. Um, I think too with getting rid completely, you know, we'll, we'll discuss in the it's cost, extreme. But yeah, it's an extreme. <laughs> um, hmm. And then like keeping it how it is. Yeah. Keep that's it how it is. Okay. The other extreme. Um, another. Um, another solution could maybe. Because we talked about undecided students, so maybe only undecided students have to take gen eds. Because then, like, if you come into Penn State knowing what your major is, okay, take those classes. But if you're undecided, take gen ed so that you get the experience. So, so vary the requirement based on like the student, you know, yeah, the student's circumstances. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Because like students coming in knowing that they are going to be pre-med or going to be this, mm -hmm. though they don't know. Is there like a pretty high rate of? Changing majors. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I don't know what it is, but, but it's definitely high. I think mm -hmm. maybe if students have like a general idea of like the field they want to go into, like if you want to go into a science field, maybe you would have to take science gen eds instead. Yeah, of, like, I think that goes like related. Yeah, I think I think that kind of goes with like the 
the more related and like the very based on circumstances. Yeah, you know? I like that. I think that makes a lot more sense. I think, you know, even two moving forward, maybe those two can be like combined or mm -hmm. you know, integrated yeah. with another yeah, I think that's one, a good alternative that's not mm -hmm. so extreme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, th I think though, you know, taking the two extremes, um, getting rid of it completely, keeping them, and then kind of, you know, finding that middle ground between cutting it down or, you know, even in half, mm -hmm. uh, making, you know, just making them more related and vary the requirement, I think are like, you know, three, more or less it's three, you know, Solid possible solutions. solutions. Yeah, yeah. Solid yeah. solutions. Um, I have one more idea that could be a solution, <laughs> or even combine it to existing ones. Maybe if we, if Penn State administered like an aptitude test, like before college started, to see like where students, like how they do in each like subject. Maybe they don't have to take as many gen ed credits in that subject. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I know Penn State kind of already that. does that with like. Don't, doesn't Penn State kind of already do that they, with, like, chemistry and, like, interest. math and stuff? Well, yeah, well, yeah, for math and chemistry. Um, yeah, yeah. But with that said, like, you know, if you need to take two gen ed math classes just because you place out of one, yeah. you still got to yeah. take two. It just kind of, for the student, yeah. leads to more hard work. You just have to take the next two mm -hmm. harder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. not, and if you're not interested, yeah. it just makes it worse. I think besides, like, an aptitude test, something to go along with it is, like, I don't know what you would call it, but like a test that makes people or would like help this universally know like how serious a student is with their studies. You yeah. Know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you're like so gung ho or you're seeing us so gung ho about your major, maybe you should just focus on mm -hmm. you know those classes where you know if you're not you know you're undecided or you're yeah. DUS and you're not really sure what you want to do, maybe like your curriculum, like we said, very requirement should be like different. Yeah. But, you know, a way of, like, the university to, like, The university that. does have, um, if you go onto, like, the DUS site, they have, like, a major test type thing. Uh -huh. it, well, kind of, like, what, where yeah, your so skills like, and Yeah, so you, like, answer, that, yeah. like, questions about, yeah. like, what you like to do what, and yeah, things like that. And it kind of, and it will, like, that. place you into, it'll like, give a, you a, yeah, a it'll just say, majors. yeah, a list of majors that, like, you could possibly right. be okay. good at or, like, enjoy. So that's just, like, a... Thing. I was browsing the DUS site. So I think all those that we just mentioned could be like combined with like other yeah, ones. Yeah, I think. Uh, but we don't talk about that. Yeah, I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, maybe, no, I think especially at least those three can be you know, related. And yeah. then kind of, you know, we can kind of find like maybe like a common ground between, you know, these if yeah. we decide to yeah. you know, move forward with them. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, unless anybody else has any more you know, possible solutions, I can't really think of any. Yeah. But maybe um, uh, students in DUS should be required to take that aptitude test or okay. like the interest test type thing, like a major test, mm -hmm. so that you're not wasting a lot of time taking all those gen eds. Because I know like, you can only have a certain amount of credits of that, those also. And if you come into school as a DUS and you take all of those credits so early, then you don't have an opportunity to go to certain majors and you don't have the opportunity to like, um, like, so, like it's going to make your other semesters like a lot harder than it could be if mm -hmm. you choose earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, to, you know, uh, a lot of students in DUS, like they take their gen, quote unquote, gen ed classes, but they're like, Sometimes like the prereqs for like a mate, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. To enter it into a major. Basic yeah, classes. yeah, yeah. Like just you know, like so like the econs or like yeah. you know, like your maths and your chemistry. That works for like a lot. Of yeah, majors. that works for like a lot of them. So I think, you know, I kind of like that. You yeah. Know, like that the school does do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that we have you know three or four solid solutions, and I think you know it'd be useful now to start discussing the pros and cons of each. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess you're know, starting with the first extreme, um, getting rid of them completely. Um, then that eliminates the whole well rounded well roundedness right. thing. I don't think that's a good solution because students need some exposure to outside work or outside yeah. like and knowledge. If they take a class and they decide that that's what they really want to do, then they would have never have even been exposed to that class, yeah. and they might end up do in a job that they hate. Yeah, but a pro, they're Save. not. Students aren't right. wasting time, and they money. are saving time and money, and they're working on their major, like sooner, mm -hmm. like learning more about their specific major, to become a better student of that 
uh, school. Honestly, though, time and money is like a really big pro. I think to mm -hmm. like even students and like parents who are paying to it, especially yeah. for their kids. Yeah. And also, the sooner they graduate college, the sooner they can get into a job and start making their own money. So, like, mm -hmm. I think time and money is a huge, yeah, that, it is, especially the opportunity cost that's yeah. there. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of students are they leave college in a crazy amount of debt. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, yeah which is sure. not helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think you know. Two, uh, an interesting thing, you know, with any of these issues would be, like, you know, a way to kind of, we talked about the aptitude test and everything for, like, students, but kind of, like, a way to maybe ask employers, like, you know, yeah. what, do you, what do you value most and, like, oh, do you idea. feel, do you, oh. you know, do you feel that students really need History 100, history 100 yeah. to help oh, yeah. them with your job? Because, yeah. you know, like, right. if, if a university had, like, feedback on things like that, uh, and going off the idea of varied requirement based on circumstances, majors, uh, people, you know, that might make the university kind of change yeah. their requirements for like each major and everything because they realize, all right, well, so it doesn't really matter, it doesn't really, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's that's a good point. idea because overall, like, we're trying to impress the employers. Yeah, so like, we don't care. Yes. Like, I like that. Because really, all we want is a job. Yeah, like, to get a job. <laughs> Which is kind of sad because, like, the employment rate is less than ideal. Or when you leave college. I, I think that would be a good idea for uh, you know more related gen eds like yeah you know, even things such as like um, you know instead of taking an art class you take a class on like interviewing or yeah, yeah. You know, right. a class on like resume you know, resume and cover letters or like, yeah. more per may job. maybe like not gen ed classes but like <coughs> professional development classes yeah, related sure. to your major yeah. yeah i think that would be i know the sports kids when we come in we have to take um um uh, our class we take a, like our first year seminar is basically how to keep like eligibility how to build a resume how to like interview, it's like all of those things, and they should really like, broaden that yeah. to like all students. Yeah, why do you guys want to take it? Like that could benefit everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so, we get like a lot of credits out of it. So like, yeah. mm -hmm. and I know like I have like a like it like it's like my resume now like it's fixed by like my teachers already. Like they looked at it and like fixed it, and like we had to like it, like take a whole class on like making that. Mm -hmm. The only con I see to that though is that it takes up a lot of time and energy for Penn State because they have to hire new professors they need to come up with completely yeah, but that's what I'm saying it's like they have those teachers in place already they're just not need, like, broad enough more, yeah so, so like so kind of summing all that up I'm gonna kind of we'll talk about the middle ground next and yeah. for all intents and purposes it'll just be we'll include all that the professional yeah. development classes yeah the, I like that the aptitude test the uh, you know, cutting them down, varying the requirements based on circumstance exactly. Like, what are yeah. the, so what are the, what are the benefits of that middle ground? Um, I think, you know, once again, saving time, time and money. And money. Um, yeah. That's like the biggest. More specific that. skills developed, especially, you know, if we, if you found a way to do professional development classes and things like yeah. that, it'd be useful to everyone. Um, I can't really think of cons to be, to be honest, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah. Does it make you more narrow-minded? Maybe, but would students necessarily care? Um, I think students that don't know yet what they want to do mm -hmm. might care because they don't. They're just going along with something. They're like, or the people who don't love the major they're currently in and they don't know where to go from there because they're only taking classes that are specific to the major that they chose when they came into school at eighteen. Probably not like. Like their brains are not fully developed yet, like they don't know fully what they want to do, and they just were like, hey, I'll do this, and now they don't have options, really, if it's, like, that specific, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, if, um, if you're in the U.S., yeah. then you're going to want to be exposed to more gen eds. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, like, the mil middle ground of, like, varying based on requirement and circumstances is, a like, So it should, it, you just need to put, like, um, keep that in mind. So I think, you know, middle ground solutions change, change gen eds based on the major. Yeah. Um, cut down the number, um, you know, employer feedback and other types of tests that would help maybe the university kind of change the curriculum mm -hmm. for students. And then, you know, off, coming off that, you know, very 
vary curriculums, the amount of gen eds based on student backgrounds, you know, if they're, like we said, if they're interested, yeah. if, they, if they know what they think they know what they want to do, at least give them the option to just focus on that. If they don't know what they want to do, you know, yeah. give them the options to kind of expand their Continue. horizons. So I, I actually think that would be a good point too. Um, and you give like students more of a choice, yeah. more yeah. control. Yeah. That's a big deal because I know when I'm taking my classes and like when I'm looking at like, okay, you have to take nine credits of math. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like, I, I yeah. don't, I hate math. Like, it just having more freedom to pick, I just think the students would be so much more satisfied. Mm -hmm. I mean, too, like I know especially like I'm, so I was originally a nutrition major and following pre-med and I made the switch sophomore year yeah. and I switched, I tried to switch to business because they don't let you, uh, but, but they don't let you switch in to a different college because mm -hmm. you don't have the required gen ed classes. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like a double ed, you know, like it kind of worked yeah. both ways. Um, but like now, you know, Penn State's requirements are minimum 120. I have like 140. And yeah. I only need two more econ classes to graduate. And I have to take what I kind of think is a pointless online humanities class on global warming. Yeah. And, you know, another writing intensive course on art, you know, is that yeah. really going to help me? At this point, I'm already going through my job interviews I'm already doing. Yeah, everything's, so I think, like, done already mm, for you. I think I think being able to give students, <coughs> more, you know, more control, uh, you know, not only does it save, th save time and money, it, it, you kind of get more bang for your buck, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's really important because yeah. tuition costs are becoming a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we, we think there's some cons, though. Um... I, I, I don't know, I think that's going to like, be the hardest one because I don't really yeah. think... Yeah, I think that really I, I says don't really think that. there are necessarily cons because you're, kind of like you're, you're kind of appeasing like both, both parties. Both sides, yeah. Sense. I think maybe one con is you know, something like cutting the number down. At the end of the day, the university is a business, so a college yeah. could use... You know, like Penn State you, could use your money you know, to be able to have all these facilities mm -hmm. and to have all these teachers for all these courses that people now want. You have to be able to have... It's like the school has to have be able to pay for them. And I think, uh, to you know, Penn State loses money. Um, teachers you know, get paid less. Teacher, teachers make less, lose jobs. Yeah. And I'm really stretching here because I think that this is a really good solution, but also I think that by students not being exposed to as many gen eds, they're like, they're not, maybe they're missing out on a career opportunity yeah, that they, they, may, they might love. Like, yeah, they might really love science know. and not be ever exposed to it because they just never took the class. Yeah. So it just, it could, it just, you could miss opportunities that you yeah. didn't even know existed. I think, yeah. too, you know, one of the things is, as much as, like, students argue about how expensive Penn State is and everything, like, yeah. I, I would tend to think that, you know, if it wasn't as much money, if it was in half, we wouldn't have half as much. We wouldn't have, yeah, that's you true. know, like, Things like the sports teams, yeah, like our um, facilities would our just activities be significantly. for those, they'd be significantly worse. And I think that hurts students in the end, though, yeah. because whether like we're we're in agreement that you know we think that we need to take advantage of it or whatnot. Yeah. There's definitely plenty of students that do yeah. want to take advantage. So yeah, so Penn State losing money is a really big con then, because yeah. then it doesn't draw as many applicants because Penn State is like beautiful <coughs> because they have all. <coughs> Because so, they have the yeah, resources yeah. to be able to build yeah. all of the... Just gonna... Make sure it's still working. We're still they going, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're good. So, just wanted to double check. So, um, I think... Three. Yeah, I, th I think from, from there we should just uh, kind of go into, you know, the other extreme, which we talked about getting rid of it completely, but keeping it you know, keeping it, keeping, how it is. It is. keeping it how it is. Um, I'm gonna get rid of these because I think we talked about that. Yeah, we we more or less talked about them. I'm gonna do one, two, and three. Yeah. So that the Penn State losing money, that they keep their money. Keep their yeah, money. so pro, more like nice facilities, more money going around, better teachers, better draws, better students. Yeah, draws all over the students. world. Even students have more. Of, they have the opportunity to take classes that they wouldn't necessarily take on their own and might 
Yeah. And this loving. is the like only school that has, or is this like one of like four schools that has certain engineering programs? There's like certain really specific like mm -hmm. petroleum engineering ones that are only given here and like specific engineering schools. Mm -hmm. So like if the school didn't have as much money, we wouldn't be They'd generating because, students yeah. that are can only be mm -hmm. right. like you know what I mean. <laughs> it's a whole ripple effect. Yeah. I think the whole thing. Yeah. It's just like more like opportunities in like general. Mm -hmm. And rounded students. Yeah. Right. Uh, That's a great point. Well, oh, is that there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I think I think Kant, uh, you know, more well-rounded students, better teachers. But with you know rising tuition costs and everything, are you going to attract? You know, moving forward, is you know the fact that Penn State requires you to take so many gen ed courses. Do you think that's going to you know keep keep attendance up and everything? Because there are schools such as you know for engineering like Stevens Institute of mm -hmm. Technology Works. You, you take classes for one semester specific to engineering, and then you co-op for one semester. You yeah, know, and so, yeah like so it's, it's, it's a like... lot more specific. And, you know, I think going in the future, you know, we have these big talks about debt and everything. Uh, you know, how much of that do you think is going to play, you know, into like this yeah. being kept as is? You know, is it going to yeah. draw? Are they going to keep students coming here, or? And I think students that aren't as economically inclined aren't going to be able to come here mm -hmm. if costs are still so high. Mm -hmm. And it's going to create like a that big barrier between students that are able to come here and get all these opportunities that you can and students that aren't able to come here. Because you can only give so much um, financial aid. Two, do, do you think it hurts like the competitiveness of students? Like... You know, uh, the one issue, you know, that the faculty had was, you know, students aren't interested. Just like students said, oh, they find it as a waste of time. Yeah. You know, um, if faculty were to keep the, the gen ed classes, but like you stated, you know, they're reworking uh, the syllabi and everything. Yeah. You know, I think that's only going to hurt students in the long run. Because yeah. I don't think keeping them is going to change the way students feel about them. Oh, you know what I mean? I, I don't like them today, but in the year I yeah. will, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's only going to hurt students in the long run. Yeah, because they, they're still not going to care. Like, mm -hmm. I'm in a bugs class right now. Like I'm, and she made it really hard all of a sudden. I have to work really hard for, like, a class. Like, knowing a lot about entomology is really not going to help me yeah. in the long run, which I weirdly know a lot about now. But this might go a little off track, but to eliminate, like, all of these cons, like, if Penn State kept the number of gen, gen ed requirements the exact same, but just allowed students a complete freedom to pick whatever classes they wanted to fulfill those, I think that would eliminate all those cons. I think that might be something we can go back and forth. Yeah, on, put it over there. I was just thinking the same yeah. thing. Like maybe one of the issues that we kind of overlooked was it's not necessarily the fact that like Penn State requires you to take gen ed classes. It's like it's just what they require it's, you it's to take. What were they require you to take? Classes. But not only that, like oh, you might. Find a gen ed class that you're interested in. Yeah. There's only one section and it's full. Yeah, so or it's, it's at like, a time oh, you can't take. Or it's it, at right? a time you can't take. So it's like, you know, you're kind of forced into taking well, classes. Like, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, because like you have to take your major classes, and if like a, only a cool gen ed that you would like to take is at that same time, like you can't choose that yeah. instead of like your actual mm -hmm. major class. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that can do two things. Uh, you know, a pro for the middle ground. It kind of kind of puts more emphasis on general eds. Yeah. Where I think a con in, you know, keeping it as is in the current form is it kind of, um, I don't want to say takes away emphasis from it, but you, you know what yeah. I mean? It's kind of like, like you said, like your major classes are more important. If you go to advisor, that's what they're going to tell you. So yeah. you're going to be like, oh, well, you can't get into the general class you want. Well, you know, just take this and you'll meet your graduation requirements. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it's kind of like a revolving, revolving yeah. cycle. Because in the end, yeah. like graduating is what's important. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, oh, and for a con for keeping it as it's like promoting cheating, kind of because like that's what students are doing. Oh, I know. Just from like the not like the con classes. Oh, who has all the answers for con? Yeah, like, yeah. Who has you can the get them all answers. Yeah. The internet. Pro so promoting cheating and another thing too is, you know, um, 
a lot of students like with their gen eds prefer to take online classes just because it's like they, they think at least that's going to be easier. You yeah. have to leave their room. You, you have to leave their room yeah. and everything. But you know, I I would I can't see an online class costing just as much as, as right. like a regular, yeah. a regular yeah. course. Real so class. like students are wasting money, and I think the university is losing out. You know, yeah. I think both both parties are losing out, like losing money on the fact because now you're paying a teacher that you really just need to hire to record some stuff, post yeah, it online, and really that's it. really it. And then you know, students are like, well, I, yeah, I could go take this online class at home and yeah. do it for so much cheaper. Yeah. So. Yeah. What are we doing on time right now? Yeah, we should. We are just at 40 minutes. Just at 40, all right. So do we just want to pick, pick a solution real quick? Uh, we won't, you know, go too much I detail. I think we kind of already made a general But I think, I think we've... Like the middle ground. I think, yeah. Clear, yeah. Like, the middle. like, we're not picking one really fast. We're, we've been talking about this whole time how the middle ground <laughs> is the best, I mm -hmm. think. So... I think it has the most pros mm -hmm. and, like, doable cons. Like, I think the cons are ones that we can work with, if that makes sense. Like, there's ways to, there's ways there's to work ways around to work that, around yeah. Them. I think, yeah, I think the real solution is, you know, like we all thought, finding yeah. that middle ground because, you know, there's so many different things you can do with it. And I think doing it in a way, like, there's definitely ways that can be done where it doesn't yeah. hurt one party more than the other. Right, yeah. And we just listed so many like mm -hmm. options that Penn State can take to do that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different ways that they could go about it. Mm -hmm. And just making things more specific to each person is just going to help in the long run anyway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess to, to end it, we can just summarize, I guess, like you know, three or four main points of like the middle ground. Yeah, yeah. We want sure. to go implementing on them. But, um, you know, I would say one is making making the requirements more specific. Yeah, right. specific yeah. to a person that major. Maybe even college. Yeah, college too. Or just a student's interest in general. Yeah. So college, goes. student, yeah. major, and interest. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, two would just be like cutting down the amount. Yeah, so it's not yeah. Yeah. because that keeps cutting. Students. I maybe maybe cutting down the amount and then adding professional development right. courses. Right. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, that's um, good. I like maybe that. not cutting in half though, because that's like a lot. Just cutting down. Maybe cutting, cutting down. down. Maybe by like cutting down and, like, and like supplementing yeah. with professional. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's not like less credits. It's mm -hmm. like just more useful. More credits. useful credits. Just take making your time more valuable, like helpful, because like, time is valuable. Um, also, like the little notes we said about like the aptitude test and like getting um, getting employers feedback. Like if Penn mm -hmm. State did something to like really go and get that data, like that's really beneficial. So, so I think you know that can be you know summed up into Penn State just needs to take Penn an extra State step. Penn State to, like, needs help to take us. extra step to extra steps to understand their students. Yeah, and needs, and you know. yeah, yeah, that's good. Also, cutting down the credits <coughs> also saves time and money, so you're saving both a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Not like a crazy amount, but still, it's cutting down. Yeah. yeah. It's making your time more useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or just being useful is like not mm -hmm. wasting is what's important here. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, through all those three, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're getting the same pros, and you're not, I mean, you're not really getting that many cons and if you are it's kind of just affecting both parties yeah so i mean if, right. unless anyone, anyone else has any more no, solutions or anything i mean i think you know finding a middle ground and as we discussed you know yeah. those three main points making requirements more specific to whether it's the, the college specific college students in students interests or students major um to cutting down you know cutting down the amount of gen eds and supplementing you know the credits that you cut with more professional development courses which are you know, could be seen as gen eds, but they're more specific to helping to your like your career and your right. major. And I think three is just you know the university taking more steps to kind of really understand their students, whether it's you know 
who's really who's really gung ho about what they want to do, who's not interested in what they want to yeah. do, and who um, needs help finding out. Who what needs they want. help yeah. finding out what they want to do? Because then I think you know from there, you you're not you know the cons such as you're losing teachers, you're losing resources yeah. and whatnot. Like you know if you're taking time to understand your students, now you're just allocating them, yeah, and right. making them more you know more useful. You're not really necessarily doing away with anything. So. I think with that said, I want to thank all of you for your time, and I think you know you did a pretty good job going through this. So thank you. Excellent. I think we're good. Yeah, and our time. Like forty-five minutes.